My News Holdings plans to open 100 new stores this year in an aggressive expansion plan that will take its total number of convenience stores to 642. CEO Dang Tai Lok is unfazed by the COVID-19 outbreak. He says My News is allocating a higher capital expenditure of 50 million ringgit to open these new stores. That will include 30 to 35 outlets of the South Korean convenience store franchise it brought in, CU. The company has its first CU outlet opened today. It will be opening 500 CU stores within the next five years. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Dang noted that the penetration rate in the country is low. He said the number of stores per million people is the lowest compared with elsewhere in the world, indicating that there is still potential to grow. My News recently announced a quarterly loss of 8.94 million ringgit with a nearly 30% drop in revenue to 98.65 million ringgit amid COVID-19 linked restrictions. The group is hoping for a gradual recovery of its business with the rollout of the national vaccination program. Economists say Malaysia needs to move on from attracting labour-intensive foreign direct investments and look towards investments that can create high-quality jobs and contribute to the nation's journey towards becoming a developed economy. Bagnagara Deputy Governor Datu Abdul Rashid Kafur said at a forum organised by the Malaysian Economic Association that the country needs to see innovation-led growth. Instead of comparing Malaysia with its neighbours such as Indonesia, Vietnam or Singapore, he said it is more important to address Malaysia's needs from foreign investment. MIDF Research Head of Research Imran Yusof shares a similar view, saying Malaysia needs to move on from the 1980s-1990s mindset of attracting labour-intensive investments into the country. He said these types of investments portend to low wages, benefiting foreign labour rather than Malaysians. Meanwhile, Malaysian Economic Association past president Dato Dr. R. Tilinathan said he is against the unrestricted importing of unskilled labour into the country. He explained that this means the economy is not upgrading and also takes away the benefits of development from low-income earners, whose wages have been kept low by this practice. Cruise ship operator Genting Hong Kong reported a bigger net loss of 973 million US dollars, about 4.035 billion ringgit for the second half of FY20 versus 102.1 million dollars a year earlier. This was mainly due to continued suspension of its cruise operations caused by COVID-19, non-cash impairment losses and other adjustments. Revenue fell to $140.6 million from $831.8 million. For the full year, Genting Hong Kong reported a net loss of $1.72 billion against $158.59 million for FY19. Top line fell to $366.8 million from $1.56 billion previously. Looking ahead, Genting Hong Kong expects its overall business performance to improve with the resumption of cruise operations of Explorer Dream in Taiwan this July and World Dream in Singapore from November 2020. Pending announcements in the month of April 2021, it expects that more than 80% of its fleet capacity over its three brands will be operational by August this year. The publication of its FY20 annual results, however, has been delayed to June 30th to allow more time to complete the audit procedures. Perodua sold an estimated 57,911 vehicles in the first quarter of this year, a 29% increase from the 44,977 units sold last year. This was thanks to higher production as the carmaker sought to meet demand for all its models, particularly the newly launched Perodua Ativa. Month-on-month, -month, vehicle registrations jumped 47.3% to 24,433 units in March versus 16,583 in February. 
Perodua President and CEO Datuk Zainal Abidin Ahmad said March saw a jump in sales numbers to an estimated 24,433 units, underpinned by strong demand, particularly for the Ativa, which had 14,574 bookings since Perodua began order taking on February 19th. Of the 14,574 Ativa bookings garnered so far, 4,345 units have been delivered since its launch on March 3rd. He said demand for the compact SUV is currently skewed 67% towards the range topping AV. This makes the Ativa the best-selling compact SUV in the country in the month of March. In terms of production, Perodua manufactured 60,383 vehicles in the first quarter, a 23% improvement year-on-year. Year. For now, Zaina Abidin said the carmaker's biggest challenge is the semiconductor chip shortage, and it is now working to find an alternative supply. Despite this issue, he said Perodua will still be able to meet its initial 2021 sales target of 240,000 units. Goldman Sachs ex-banker Roger Ng's lawyer argues that there is no proof which shows that the money in Ng and his wife's bank accounts is proceeds of illegal activities linked to 1MDB. Ng's lawyer, Datuk Tan Hock Chuan, told High Court Judge Justice Mohamed Zaini Mazlan that the prosecution failed to prove on a balance of probabilities that the money had anything to do with 1MDB. He said the prosecution's allegations are based on the affidavits provided by Assistant Commissioner R. Raja Gopal and Superintendent Fu Wei Min, who were involved in the investigation of Ng's case. These are bare assertions, Tan told the court, and are not backed by prima facie evidence. The lawyer added that other than affidavits provided by the investigating officers, there was no other proof that Ng and his wife had spent or used 1MDB-linked money. He said Putrajaya should not therefore forfeit the money. <music>